It all starts with the throw of a dart. How would you like to throw a dart at the world's map? Go wherever it lands, then while at it, raise money and help start a movement that changes people's lives. That's exactly what Soren Mihailovic and Matt Cook did this past Christmas. They took a leap of faith, let their destination be chosen blindfolded, and committed to go wherever the dart landed. When we first threw that dart, we had no idea where it was going to land. I said you guys were crazy. It's crazy. 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 Crazy guys. Very brave. Cool. Cool. Really adventurous. But you're also awesome for doing it. Just miles away from the North Pole on a tiny archipelago called Svalbard, which accommodates just about 2,000 people and 3,000 polar bears. It's very exciting. Uh, they could have ended up anywhere. In the winter, it is pitch dark 24 hours a day, reaching temperatures below 40 in the midst of a frozen ocean. The two Canadians had three weeks to spend there. It turned out to be the best expedition one could ever imagine. Since the budget for this trip was, well, zero dollars, and the timeline was four short weeks, Matt and Soren had to make it happen. We're pretty good at what we're doing, and this adventure is just starting. They had not only to raise the money to get there, but create a good enough cause that would leave a mark on Svalbard. We'll let them tell you the story, but let's just say it involves the creation of an international campaign called Polar Faith. A professional videographer to shoot commercials for the sponsors which they got. Thank you all the way from the North Pole. Capturing of national media attention. Securing of companies like Canada Goose and Silver Jeans to provide them the gear. And raising some money for the World Wildlife Fund for the protection of the polar bears. Not to mention that they had also raised the profile of the archipelago. I heard a story and, and saw the film and I, I thought that was uh, just a, a great thing to do. We hope you enjoy their adventure as much as I did. Let's see how the first of the Travel by Dark episodes went. We have partnered with Svalbard Tourism to make this documentary film and to spread the word about how amazing Svalbard is. Yeah. Yeah. Lucky for us, they, they came up here and uh, we got to, to show them what we are proud of up here. All right, so that's it. We are in Longyearbyen, a little township in uh, Svalbard, the most northern city in the entire world. And uh, we just woke up to polar night. Uh, it's about, I think, what is it, three o'clock in the afternoon. It's pitch black outside. And this is the first time we're gonna go check out the place. The city itself, it's only about a few hundred meters and uh, there's one little street and uh, we're gonna check the whole city in like 45 minutes maybe. There's a thunder, it's a rain coming down Honey, your absence leaves a deafening sound Black rain. The longer you're here, the better things are gonna be in terms of strangeness. They very much have, you know, kind of that, you know, independent spirit of wandering and adventure and all that. You see it in a lot of people who want to try projects here. A wonderful way to start a relationship between Svalbard and Canada. There's a lot of good things that can come out of it. It's, it's, the, it's the landscape, I think, in the wildlife. It's, uh, it, it does something to you. It's, uh, it's just magic, actually. You get this uh, polar bug inside your body and it uh, stays there forever. And I've been here now for more than 17 years and I still have this um, feeling when the light is coming back. I still have this uh, great experiences every time I go outside. Okay, we're at the Global Seed Vault and Global Seed Vault is... Matthew? <laughs> Okay. We have this, you know, global seed vault, which, you know, should be kind of this crowning jewel of, you know, scientific and, you know, community achievement. And this costed $45 million to build, all paid by the Norwegian government. 
and it's supposed to be a food source when uh, you know there's some catastrophic thing. And there's some huge calamity. They come here to get all the unmodified, ungenetically engineered seeds, and they plant the new crops for the new world. And instead, what we have is you know people coming up here and shooting it with all these you know deep you know haunting you know overtone themes and you know are there evil scientific purposes uh, you know being done here in secret or you know movies will get filmed of how this you know doomsday vault you know has zombies and stuff running around in it. let's go inside <laughs> there's like a video game that has the same theme no luck <laughs> <laughs> So, we're getting ready for uh, getting out tonight for New Year's Eve, and uh, we got dressed up, and uh, yeah, we're about to head off to uh, the ballroom and go hang out with 300 Svalbardians. So this is raw beef. And uh, this is the first first of five courses at the New Year's Eve dinner. And Soren has just come to the conclusion by talking to some Norwegians that this is in fact not a Norwegian specialty. And I'm scared to eat it. <laughs> Soren, Soren loves it. But that's because he's crazy and he's European. So. I'm feeling way better than I was yesterday, which is awesome. Uh, the remedies must have worked. We're about to head off to Kiersey's house, the general manager of Svalbard Tourism, and uh, we're excited to see what her house looks like. She's a local here, and we want to get involved with the local culture. Um, she's going to cook us a nice meal, and uh, we can't wait. <laughs> have you tasted the pizza they have on Krua down here? No. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. It's the best, best piece of pizza I've ever eaten. What's your favorite one? What's on it? Uh, it's called Svalnor, and it's like chicken and a pineapple and stuff. Oh, it's so good. Nice. <laughs> yes. Me and my mom always take, uh, used to take that one. Oh. And share one. Nice. Go on this again. Say hello to my little friend. What's his name? Oh, Dracula. This is Dracula. What a cutie. So because Kirsty helped us a lot, we thought that as a sign of appreciation, we give her something uh, and return. On, uh, on behalf of the both of us, we wanted to uh, uh, give you something from Canada that we have especially for you. Uh, as a sign of appreciation, uh, saying thank you for all the help that you've uh, been giving us. So it's a very well-known uh, vodka in Canada, it's called <laughs> Polarized Vodka. Oh, and that's so awesome. we brought it here for different reasons, but we said no, we have to give this to Christy for <laughs> no help. So this is on behalf yeah. of Matt. Oh, myself. that's great. With a polar Because we also know you guys, guys have problems buying alcohol here. So <laughs> this might fit well nice. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's so welcome. much fun. <laughs> So today I think for Soren and I was probably the most exciting day of the trip so far. I think it's something like day eight um, in on the trip. Um, we got the privilege of going down and spending the day with 52 of the most beautiful husky dogs I've ever seen. Um, Svalbard Tourism and Svalbard Husky put together an all day dog sledding trip. And uh, we got to spend our time cruising through the polar night with um, these dogs. And 
these huskies are just amazing animals. And the dog, dog sledding trip itself, it's something that everybody should experience in a lifetime. We're gonna check out the uh, city on some dog sleds. Four hours of full adventure, let's check it out. No time to waste on the things that I don't have. I toss of the dark and we're off my bags are packed. Oh. Wherever it lands, wherever I will be. It's not just adventure, it's my destiny. darkest time of the year and the moon is full and the weather is clear and it's uh, so beautiful outside. Svalbard as a tourist destination is not the regular place to go for a holiday. All together we have about 1500 people visiting us every year. This is amazing. On our way back we are calm and tired and all of a sudden our attention got caught by this uh, uh, shocking scenery. There was another uh, dog camp and uh, outside of it there were quite a few dead uh, seals that were hanged by, by the owners in front of the dog camp as bait for polar bears in order to avoid the dogs being eaten first. It was, uh, was a little bit of an eerie uh, scenery so we got out of there quick. These people actually try to live with the polar bears and that's something coming into this and you, it's really hard to understand but polar bears is a serious thing. Like someone came and started Svalbard, whoever it was that founded this place, set up shop and tried to live amongst 2,500 polar bears. So we go around and no matter what we're doing, whether we're snowmobiling, we're taking husky dogs out on a dog sled team, we're always weary of what's out there. It's, it's pitch black and you got your rifle, you got your common sense, and you just hope for the best. Nobody dies in Svalbard and nobody is born in Svalbard, so that's a very interesting thing. People cannot be buried here uh, because of the permafrost. And uh, if somebody gets really, really sick, he is transported uh, to the mainland in, uh, in Norway. Same with giving birth. Uh, every woman who is almost gives birth is taken to the mainland. So we're about to check out the largest wine cellar in all of Scandinavia. How many bottles are there? I think uh, 26,000. We're at the uh, local called Huset, uh, which means the house. <laughs> So we have around 900 titles, well, 900 different titles, and, uh, but we still have a lot of each title. So we have the same wine in different, in, in different vintages for a long way, maybe 15 to 20 vintages. Well, here is uh, Italy, the Rhone Valley. As you can see, we have a lot of Rhone Valley. Also some uh, Tuscan wines, some uh, German wines, some wine from 1978. I think the oldest one is from 1900, I think. It's a Madeira wine. We'll show different things later. It's a mix between uh, Riesling and Sauvignon. Cheers. Check out 50 of that. Cheers. 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 Cheers.
Let's go. Since we have three more days in Svalbard, uh, we decided to take this to a whole different level. There's a tradition here that everybody should do a polar dip. A polar dip is basically a bath in the freezing waters of the Arctic. We're just about to do the polar dip and we're gonna stick a thermometer in the water. Uh, the water is supposed to uh, freeze uh, in the next few days. We're gonna check the temperature and then run in. Yeah, that's about all there is to it. <laughs> <laughs> Can it's we... minus 2.5? You can prove it! Oh my god! <laughs> okay, I, is that possible? Shot. It's because of the soft in the water. It's cold, um, it's going to hurt a little bit, but it's, uh, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It takes you, uh, I'll promise you, it takes you not more than um, 15 seconds. <laughs> it's going to be quick. The most important thing, we received an ice swimming certificate um, from Spitsbergen Travel and they were declaring us a real polar bear. It's actually freezing to my body. Check out the ice on my foot. So for the 45 second dip we did, we got a certificate. Well, that's it. To the sauna. Uh, this feels good though. From negative 2.5 to 60 degrees. Yeah. You did one of these? Yeah. In under in the yeah, water, yeah. Yeah, we did. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was insane. It was a lot of fun. We went out into the pitch black, uh, took our snowmobiles. We had a personally guided tour. Um, Svalbard Tourism hooked us up with a, a tour guide. I bring uh, as a flare gun and also a, a rifle so I can protect my guests for being taken by polar bears. So we're going uh, alongside the highway here for a while and then we're crossing the valley and going into the river system and into the pingo. And Barbara is leaning that way. Okay, that's much easier. This is it, we're uh, getting ready to go on our snowmobile trip. Yeah, yeah. We heard it's gonna be a very good trip. Uh, uh, it seems like we're uh, gonna have some epic time for, for the next four or five hours. I will do a push up for every subscriber that we're getting on our channel. How many? How many? And we can show what we have to, to show people up here in the dark period. At some point we found uh, the remains of a Russian plane that uh, crashed in Svalbard about 24-25 years ago and uh, that had 141 people on board. Wow! What else did we see? Oh, the beds. Some people just left a couple of, uh, a couple of iron beds right in the middle of nowhere and instead of calling it garbage and cleaning it up, they actually declared it a landmark. Well, our dart hit the right spot. We made it. We didn't feel cold at all. I mean, we're flying through the foothills at, what, 60, 70 kilometers an hour and the wind whipping in our face. So far, so good. I'm warm. We had our 
hoods, our helmets, our goggles, our mitts. We love that. I will do travel by dark forever. This uh, snowmobiling trip makes me actually want to move to the Arctic. I want to do it every day. I can see why people love snowmobiles. It's so much fun. And we just want to say thank you to our guide, Vine. Best guide you can ask for. Awesome guy. This is our last day in Svalbard and it's been an amazing journey. We did so many great things, tobogganing, dog sledding, snowmobiling. And we've met some of the coolest people and we've experienced some of the most amazing things in our lives and we can't wait to do it again. You want to go on the, on the magic carpet and garbage bag ride? Or? <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Okay, ready? <laughs> I'm really glad that the throw of a dart and the faith chose Svalbard as a destination. I would come back in a second. And I, uh, I think it will be exciting to follow them on the next, uh, on the next uh, dart hit. <laughs> I have no doubt that the next time we do this, um, more doors are going to open and life's adventures are going to just throw themselves at us and we're going to make magic happen. Uh, people up here, they are a little bit special. They are a little bit dreamers. 